that's where it breaks. Put it in the validation loop, it no longer works. So that's what it looks like. Uh, I guess the thing that isn't working is the validation group um, is not working the way I would expect it to. Let's Google this real quick. Because I thought you would be able to put in different validation groups and have your error messages show in a different spot. But... find the button who gets it. Let's go back here and see. I can validate.
thunderstorm controls. I want it on a single button event. Okay, actually to, to do exactly what I wanted to do was, was difficult because it, it looks like the, the, let's see, can you use, let's see, inside the button. Inside the button click you can validate the groups. Anyhow, looks like to, to get to multiply multiple groups, or to validate multiple groups, you'd have to do some finagling. That the default behavior is only to specify one uh, validation group, so I misspoke on that one. Yeah, I thought you were able to do um, multiple easily with one. Apparently, you have, to, you have to code around that. Yes? Somewhere I missed what, what the group was. The group is just a name that I defined. All right. What's in your group? Right? What I did is I went into this validation control and I associated a group with it. Ship. I put on my summary that this is a summary of the errors for ship. All right. Okay. And then I put on the button that it should validate the group ship. All right, so the, the three things going together, you, you associate the validation control, the validation summary, and the button with the group of stuff you want to validate. Actually, it, it seems like multiplying, uh, not, why do I want to say multiplying? Validating multiple uh, groups is, uh, you can do it, but, but you have to fiddle around a bit with the code. That by default, the button also has associated with it a validation group, and that's the validation that fires off. So in my example, you know, um, you could choose which sets of fields you want to validate, but um, without putting some coding in there, um, you, you can't validate all of them. What did you try to do? You tried to put both uh, text boxes or both validators in the same group? Yeah, both validators in the same group is fine. Um, the the two validators, uh, the two validation groups, um, again, does not appear to be um, supported. And what two groups were you trying to? Well, I was going to have the one field set and the other field set. Um, oh, validate with one. Validate button. with one with one button. But apparently you can only validate one group at a time. All right. That was more time on that than I cared to spend, but I did learn something, so that's important. Keeps, yeah, I keep looking here. To top it all, you can only assign... There's no way to specify multiple validation groups using the validation group property. And then again, we can, we can monkey around with the code to get it to work, but there's no way directly in the framework to do that. In which case, I would suggest just having the one group then per page, unless you want to mess around with doing that. And then you'll put all your error messages in, in a consistent spot. You won't be able to split the error messages into, into two areas. You'll just be able to show the summary at one spot. All right. 
next thing. If you uh, on page, and I'm just going to mention these real briefly because I spent a little more too much time on um, that part. If you look on page 178 in your text, they talk about using the ASP AX file to do things such as um, keeping track, keeping count of how many people um, are logged on to the system. That's a nice example because any individual page can only know about its own session. One page can't really know about the other session unless you use application variables. And what application variables are, are variables that keep track of things overall for the whole application. So <coughs> on 182, um, they show a, a way of keeping track of uh, how many people are logged on to the systems. How many well, actually, to be more precise, how many times people have requested a certain page. Not terribly useful, but uh, that particular example, but the idea is is that you can put code in different events associated with the application to keep track of things that happen on an application wide and not on just an individual session. The other thing that I want you to look at is on page, if you don't have your book with you, just jot it down and you can look at it later, is on page 200, they talk about adding a skin to your page. A skin consists of, um, actually a theme consists of a skin file and a um, CSS file. And what you can do is you can get, you can associate some attributes with your, of your ASP.NET controls. You can create styles for those. So, for example, let's say I wanted every ASP text box to look a certain way. All right. How could I do that? Can I do that with CSS? Well, I could assign them all the same class, I guess. All right. But that would be my only choice. So an alternative way of doing that is to set up a, a, a skin and a skin file and, and define in there that ASP.NET text boxes that run at server have a foreground color of blue, all right, or a background color of whatever. And in that way, since you don't have an HTML or ID or any other hook into the CSS, you can apply the visual attribute right to the ASP.NET control. All right. So in terms of styling, you really have a variety of choices. If you have a hook to it, that is, if you can use the normal CSS selectors, the HTML tags, the classes, the IDs, the context-based selectors, any of those selectors that you can normally put in an HTML file, you can put in a style sheet for an ASP.NET as, as long as you know the HTML is going to get generated and you know that you can address it. But there will be some instances where you really can't do that. And in which case, that's where you look at the skin. And in the skin, you can, set, you can specify in a certain file that the ASP.NET buttons all have a certain look. Let's go and let's add a skin. is wanting to put it in the themes folder. So, okay, I'll go put it in the themes folder. All right. And what I'm going to do is, here this gives you a little bit of help in the comments. 
But I'm going to do something with all ASP.NET buttons. So now I've defined that in the skin file. Now what I have to do is I have to point this page to the skin file. can do this in the configuration file. Or I can do it on an individual page. Notice that the text on it is blue now. All right. So, how would we put this in CSS? Well, in this case, I can't use an HTML tag to, to, to style this, right? Because that's an input element. The button is an input, type equals submit. And um, I can't with at least with earlier versions of CSS, point to that specifically. I could do it based on the ID, all right? So I could do it that way, or I could assign a class to it. The other thing I can do is I can apply a skin to it, and then that skin gets laid on that, and I can associate the skin with an individual page, or, can I, associate, or I can associate the skin with all the pages on my site. So now you have choices on how to style things, and you almost have too many choices to style things. You can style things um, in CSS. You can style most everything, but not literally everything. You can style um, things in uh, skin files. You can style ASP.NET controls directly. But then on each individual one, you can go in and you can set some individual style attributes as well. So you have a lot of places where you can do that. Therefore, it's best that you think things through prior to doing it. Otherwise, you'll create a mess. All right. Now, on to the project. All right. We've given you all these tools for multiple page sites. And again, we did it so that we can, we can talk about the project now and you can get started. Now, one question that, that a student had, or one objection that a student had uh, in, in a previous semester, semester, they said something like this. They said, well, how can I design a website if I don't know how to do something yet? All right. So for example, how could I design a website that would allow me to type in a professor's name 
and see a list of all classes that that professor teaches. All right? I don't know how to do that. We haven't talked about that in this class. And so if I was de 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 devising, if my project was to develop a college website, and maybe that's one of the things I had in it, how can I design that if I don't know how to do it? The answer is, all right, is that we can count on some pretty basic functionality you'll be able to do. And to design it or to sketch it out, you don't need to know how to do it exactly. All right? Uh, in fact, very rarely when someone designs something, do they know necessarily exactly how they're going to do it. Now, depending on their experience, they may know a little more or a little less about how they're going to do it. But the idea of design is to figure out what you're going to do. How you're going to do it is going to come sort of in a later step of the design process, if you will. So to develop our design document, um, you just need to know um, that more than likely, if you're talking about basic database operations, add something to a database table. Retrieve something from a database table. Filter out stuff from a database table. Change something in a database table. Delete stuff from a database table. That those basic sort of fundamental things you're able to do. You will be able to do by the time the project is, is turned in. All right? If you're in doubt, if you have something that isn't necessarily quite that straightforward, you can always bounce it off of me and say, here's what I'm thinking of doing. Does that sound feasible? And when I grade your design projects, I will look and I will do that sort of feasibility thing and say, no, that, that's way beyond the scope of this class. Uh, or I'll say, yep, that's okay. All right. So that, the, the point is, the bigger point is, is you shouldn't let that kind of thinking stop you from working on the design of your project. Okay. Let's look and see what the requirements of the project are. See, even here it says to, to, to apply a skin to all the pages, to an individual page, to an individual control. So you have choices all over the place. You just have to um, think about it in advance and come up with a scheme that's going to that's gonna work. more days than the presidential candidates have in making their case. All right? Because what, the election's the six, right? I think. And this is due the eighth. first suggestion is that um, try and have fun with this. I know it's a requirement. Very few people probably do this sort of stuff for fun. All right. Although, I'm having a heck of a good time preparing for my Android class. Because I'm going in and I'm doing stuff and I'm playing around with that and all that. So, I would hope that you don't, if you're going into this as a, is, is 
as a career, that you don't view this sort of thing as sort of like a grim duty that you have to do, that it, you at least get some sort of satisfaction out of it. So that, you know, I should make a requirement. I, I should, you should be graded on how much fun you have on it, all right? That, that'd be, I gotta figure out how I could do that, all right? Uh, at any rate, decide a purpose for your ap application. Be creative, it could be about almost anything. A hobby, you can make a little online bulletin board, an online poll, an online catalog for like a fictional uh, organization, almost anything. It doesn't have to be big, all right? I'm doing the worst thing that I say uh, I never do. I'm reading to you directly from that, uh, from the screen. A key point is, is whatever it does, it should do completely. So it doesn't need to do everything related to your topic, but, all right, if whatever task it does, it should do that completely. So for example, Let's say I were to make, there, there's a student in my class that made uh, an online poll where you could go and you could vote. There, there were so many questions, you know. Uh, I, I think the person was a fan of Twilight, so they asked you if you were on Team Edward or Team the other guy. Uh, who's the other guy? Jacob. Jacob, thank you. Team Edward or Team Jacob, all right. And then you could vote, and then you could see the results, all right. So that was like, it's not earth shattering. It's not everything in the world, but for what it was meant to do, it did everything. It showed you the list of questions. You could click on the question and see the alternatives. You could pick an alternative, vote, and you could see the response. Now, her website didn't allow you to add new questions. All right. It didn't allow you to do that. It didn't allow you necessarily to, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing some of this from memory, so I might be off a little bit. It didn't allow you to, for example, put comments in associated with the poll. It didn't do everything that you could possibly dream up that you might see on an actual live polling site. But the stuff that it did, it did. All right? And it did it well and it did it effectively. So that's what I mean. You don't have to solve, you don't have to create a, a self-contained, all-encompassing uh, application that does everything related to a topic. You just have to implement one or a handful of pieces of functionality and, and do it well, all right? So, for example, maybe, you know, you want to do an online catalog, all right? That doesn't mean you have to set up a shopping cart and, and this, that, and the other. You could, all right, but it doesn't mean that you have to. Your, your thing could just be like to create a wish list, you know, like you do on Amazon, where people could create a wish list of the, the items that they want or whatever. So you don't have to think in terms of creating some gigantic wide-scale application. Just create some something that works completely as a unit, no matter how humble that is. All right. Be careful not to pick something too big or too small. All right. Um, I appreciate students that are ambitious, you know. I won't tell you not to do something if I think it's too big, but I'll, I'll give you feedback as far as how big slash how difficult slash it, it will be. You're not penalized for trying something too big if you scale it down, provided you still fulfill the requirements of the exercise. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, though, is almost anything you can think of can be expanded or contracted, you know. If you have a, a little idea, all right, um, we can take and add stuff to that idea to make it, um, you know, to make it more complete. Or we can take things away from it 